I'm excited for today. We're heading out in a few minutes, but before we go, I want to share with you how this whole idea of starting a video blog came about. We love sharing stories of our work, travels, and everyday life, and these stories are shared through Lisa's writing on her blog and her Instagram. Now, Lisa's writing is on a whole different level. She's been writing ever since I knew her, which is basically forever. So I've been looking for a way for me to tell our story in my own way, and that's when I decided to start doing a video blog. Lisa and I love watching movies. We used to tell students at our workshops before that our style of shooting is primarily influenced by films and life experiences. So I started recording our trips during the latter half of 2016 but only started publishing them about a month ago. And looking back at all the time when my footage and ideas just sat in some hard drive, gathering virtual dust, I've come to realize I was going through the same feelings we had when we were first starting out our career as professional photographers. Now there's a lot of reasons people stop from pursuing something new, but I can think of three big ones that I want to talk about. Now this doesn't have to refer to photography, it could mean anything from starting a new business or a new creative endeavor or even a small personal project such as this. And the first reason is feeling like you don't have enough. Now Lisa and I started shooting weddings with a 400D and a 40D with one flash and three non-L lenses. And these cameras were far from being professional grade and shooting above ISO 800 would result in muddy photos. Photography is an exercise in problem solving and you're always juggling a lot of things to translate the image you have in your head into a photograph. Now since we had the most basic of equipment, we had to study harder and try to compensate with a relentless desire to learn more and be better than our gear. Make do with what you have and work on gradually improving your arsenal as your budget grows. Don't be upset or indulge in self-pity about having less. Work on being more. Remember, scale will always be more important than gear. In your moments of doubt, look up iPhone photographers online and see the brilliant images these people can come up with with just a phone camera. It can be done. The second is thinking you don't know enough. Learn solid basics, then go out there and learn the rest as you go. I don't mean to go out there and start charging people with the barest of knowledge. Learn the ropes before you take major responsibilities. We shot as a second team until we were comfortable enough on taking on weddings as the main team. If you find a company that reflects your own aesthetic and vision that's willing to take you in, work for them and soak up as much as you can. A lot of the important things you need to learn can only be learned through experiencing them hands-on. You can watch all the videos and read all the books, but nothing will ever replace experience. There will never be a perfect time. You can waste months, years, waiting for the stars to align and for your ducks to get in a row, and it may never ever happen. And if it does happen, it may very well be too late then. Do it when you feel the urgent need to create it, because that's when you have the most heart to offer. The third is fear. Fear is probably the biggest thing that stops most people. It's terrifying putting yourself out there, doing more, and trying to be better than you are. Fear is crippling and will shoot down your ideas at the door. Don't get me wrong, it can be useful and important. Fear tells you that snakes are bad, a moving car will kill you, and to keep away from clowns. All very sensible things. But if you let your fear dictate what you can and cannot do, you'll be spending most of your life indoors doing absolutely nothing. Take your worst case scenario and your best case scenario and weigh your options. The worst case scenario is that you fail, and it's scary, right? But so what if you do? You know, I saw this TED talk of this man, his name is Jia Jiang, and he had this terrible fear of rejection. So he set out to cure it by going out and seeking to be rejected by people 100 days in a row. If you haven't seen this yet, you really should, it's very inspiring. He came up with this ridiculous list of things that he could get rejected for, like borrowing money from a stranger or asking to plant a flower in a stranger's backyard. He didn't make it to 100 days of rejection. He didn't even make it to 5 before getting a yes. Sometimes all it takes is a little courage and an unshakable audacity to dream. Now the best case scenario is you get to create and it reaches a group of like-minded people who may need it at the time. So that thing you've been waiting to pursue for months, for years, do it today. Now it's time to go.
Thank you. Nice meeting you. Thank you. Thank you.